looking at a, one of my favourite nymphs here and one that works exceptionally well <clears throat> early in the season uh, to give you an idea of how much I hold this thing in high regard I'm just putting a another box together I've been using this fly for I don't know probably about 15 years and I use it quite big early in the season this is quite a big um, nymph here and I've got a 3.5 mil bead on there um, 3.5 and 3 mil is about about right for this but it's just a really really simple fly to tie but most of the nymphs that you're looking to copy um, are quite big at this time of year I say this time of year March and April so early season um, most are going to be you're looking for the the nymphs of LDOs and Brook Duns and March Brown, so quite a big fly, hence the size 12. I tie them in this, it's a long shank hook. Um, I'll use smaller jig hooks in the summer, but I want something meaty, thick wire, and something that's going to hold on should I hook a big fish. So um, don't, don't get caught out, because the fish are early in the season, it's the time of year to catch some small flies. Um, they just disappear later on in the year feeding another fish. So for small flies, make sure you've got a strong hook. So the first thing I'll do before I take the actual fly out of the vise is I'll stick a <clears throat> 3.5 mil bead on here. The pattern itself, you can see there it's it's really so I'll just stick a bead on the hook there. But the pattern itself is basic most of my flies I can tie in like a minute or two minutes because you can tie fancy flies and don't get me wrong there'll be the other occasion when they work but to be fair generics probably better than fancy so I've got the hooking device there and I'm just gonna come in with a an 8 tie tying thread um, and just what I do is if I keep my thumb and forefinger there it allows me to get some bulk in and it just locks the there you go lock the bead in place there so that 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 bead doesn't move now it's locked in place with a taper so pair of scissors pair of scissors come in and snip the tag end now I'll look to run the thread in touching turns all the way down the hook shank to just as it's starting to to go around the bend there. It doesn't want to go around the bend. And I see a lot of cook de Leon on flies as tails. This was shown to me by a guy in the Czech Republic. Um, I use CDC in my tail. I use a whole feather. You can do it in a dubbing loop and have it as a skirt. It's another fly I've got, but that's a secret one, maybe for another day. Um, but just come in and catch this on top of the hook shank. So just with your, with your feathers there, Catch that on top of the hook shank and just do a couple of turns. Just check that. So it's sitting flush on the top of the hook shank. Now, I don't want a long tail. So I just pull. You can see I'm pulling the fibres until I'm happy with the tail length. But you see I've got the natural curve of the feather going up the way. So get a little bit of tension on there. I want to pull it just a little bit more. That's about right there. You'll see that the tail's... So half the length of the whole hook shank. So again, wind that down so that I've got, um, well, I've got a nice taper there, as you can see. Sorry, not a taper. I've got a nice flush body. But what I've got is I've got my tail sitting perfectly, coming off the top of the hook shank. It's not to the side. Up with my, my tying thread. And here, <clears throat> you don't, I don't tie this as a rib to be visible. I tie this as a rib so I can get a lot of wrappings and I can pull my dubbing out. So I've got a, a really thin um, copper wire. I'll just prefer copper. What you can do is you can put the tip of the copper wire into the top of the slotted bead. Locks everything in place just a little bit better. And I come down just to right to the tail there. Give myself some space to work with. Now what I'm going to do is, I've got here this 
This is a special mix that somebody does for me. It's basically squirrel um, with a few other bits of fur in there, but it's just a really good colour as you see on the original fly. So I'm just going to take um, a generous pinch. Now there's a way to tie in these flies. A lot of people, you just, people say dub the body on um, and a lot of people just leave it just like that. However, there is there is ways of getting your flies a little bit better. So I'll show you how I do it. So I've got a thin dubbing rope there, nice and thin. Coming up the hook shank. I missed a bit there. Coming up the hook shank. Like so. Just about round about here. Watch. I come in with this stuff again and I'm just going to take a generous pinch and I'll come up to the bead. This is what I mean by you create your fly a little better. So I'm going to create a, a little bit of a taper on there. So from here down, just down, down, down. So I'll create that taper up through with a black there. So you can see I've got a taper on the body there and then just come in. What I like to do here is just take a, a, a thread wrap in there. Now, like I say, this is not for any kind of visibility. It's more so that I can bind the fur in really tight. So close, really close, touch and turns there of the um, wire. And then just lock that in place. Lock it off, you see? Just like that. And then just twizzle that wire. Um, again, just a couple of turns here. Now, with any kind of fur, actually I can tie that off now. With any kind of fur, what I like to do is, I like Velcro. You can get little machines and everything to do it, but I, I kind of swear by Velcro when it comes to um, natural fibers. And all I'm doing is I'm, I'm pulling some of the, the fibers out, but you can see I kind of get a lot out because I've got so many um, I've got so many wraps with that small copper wire there. I don't want too much hair because I want this to get down. It's early season and I want this to get down in the, in the water column. There you go, you can see them perfect like that. Now we come in. This is my trigger um, and I use it a lot in my fly. It's, it's a glow bright number four. You can see there. And the way to do this so you don't get a tag end is come in and do a couple of wraps. So one, two, and then you move your your tag end above the eye and lock that in place like so. And it's just it's basically put it out of the way if that makes sense. In with your scissors, nice and close, as close as you dare. I'll probably left a little tag end there. And that's him. That's him tied. So you've got your little your trigger there, just a little whip finish. Keep everything in place. Nice, neat and tidy. And then you can just come in with a little bit of varnish. I should have had this ready, sorry. A little bit of varnish here. And just come in either side. Make sure you're not getting any in the fur. And that is it. So that's, that's probably, um, my go-to fly the year through, but for early in the season, you want to tie it on a, a bigger hoop. This is a size 12. Sometimes I'll tie that in a size 10. That's a Hanak 400 BL. A 3.5 or 3 mil bead is ideal. Um, and fish two of them. And you want to be fishing that in popular water, pre-hatch stuff. A great fly for early season trout. And I've caught some real monsters on this fly. I hope you catch some too.